think I've mentioned the word emotional postures and just to kind of say a little bit about where that comes from. Because that was a, um, a phrase or a term, a concept that I, I sort of borrowed from um, uh, uh, James Griffith and Melissa Elliott Griffith, um, who wrote a beautiful book called The Body Speaks. And if you haven't heard, I and mean, you hadn't read that book, and um, not only if you work in physical health, if you work in physical health, I think it's an absolute must. But even if you don't, I think it's a really, really beautiful book. And one of the ideas I took from that book and from them is this idea of emotional postures. And it connects with the ideas of John Schotter and lots of, or, you know, all the communication theorists, really, who say that language is not just verbal, it's also bodily. You know, we speak not only with words, but we also use our bodies in our talking. And then John Schotter particularly talks about when meetings begin, they begin with the bodily expression. You know, so we, you know, he, John, John always says, you know, are we, you know, there, first there is the action and then there is the reaction. You know, and so we always, when we are meeting with people in our bodies, and that's the very first meeting place. And I think that was really informing me when I thought about that little ritual that we were talking about beforehand, because. When people come into the room, that is the beginning of the relationship. How, how you actually meet them is, is, is really setting the context for how you go on. And so, you know, what the, the Griffiths talked about is that we meet people in postures. Our postures involve our body's readiness to respond. You know, so we might be um, ready to respond. You know, they call these emotional postures. So we will carry with us different postures, and our emotional postures, I mean, they give examples about how, you know, they give two emotional postures that they talk about, or two classes, if you like, of emotional postures. They talk about a posture of tranquility and a posture of mobilization. And um, they talk about a, a posture of tranquility as being, um, they have this lovely um, picture in their book of two um, deer and, um, the, uh, the first deer in a posture of tranquility, and you can almost see it moving in the picture. This deer is standing there, and you can see its four legs are apart, and its head is down, and you can see it's actually chewing, um, I don't know if deer chew the cud, but anyway, it's certainly <coughs> chewing away at, its, at the grass, and its tail is moving in the wind, and it's actually, it's, a its attention is all really focused on what it's doing, and on kind of taking in the food, and actually kind of metabolizing it and chewing it <coughs> over. And so that emotional posture, you know, is what, what connects with the Griffiths who talk about how our emotional postures focus our attention, both to other people and to ourselves, differently. And they, they, you know, they, it's, that our bodies are primed completely differently to kind of focus our attention. So in a posture of tranquility, our bodies are fi primed to focus uh, our attention inwardly, to kind of reflect, to kind of absorb, to take in, to mull over. So, you know, in a human, that would be the kind of posture of tranquility, would be taking in. So if you think about taking ideas, be taking ideas in, reflecting on them, chewing on them, kind of, you know, absorbing them. Um, and they make a distinction between a posture of tranquility and a posture of mobilization. So the next picture that you see is the um, picture of this deer in a posture of mobilization. It's horns sticking out and its ears picking up and its whole body is rigid and its tail is down and it's looking and you can almost see the eyes moving and traversing and looking. And they talk about this posture of mobilization as being kind of the readiness is to respond to attack, to defend, to protect quite a different posture from one where it's absorbing, you know, and allowing and kind of reflecting. And so again, you know, if we relate that to people, we could think about posture of mobilization where people are actually, you know, sort of either anticipating criticism or ready to justify or counter justify or kind of defend or protect. <laughs> Um, and, you know, they talked also about how in the animal kingdom, and if anyone's had the privilege of being on safari, you see this beautifully in the animal kingdom, you see there'll be a whole group of animals sort of in a little circle, and they're all kind of chewing and reflecting, and they're all in a posture of tranquility. And there's one on the outside that's looking out. 
before everything, and the eyes are going, and it's kind of you know scanning the horizon for any danger. And they talked about how sometimes in families there's someone either allocated or who takes on the role of actually kind of watching for everybody else, really to make sure that it's safe. So <coughs> I was thinking that in the same way, you know, as the Griffiths. <coughs> Excuse me. How do we how do we invite the people we work with into a posture of tranquility so that people can feel comfortable being touched by the words of others? And as Tom Anderson says, experiencing those words as stroking or caressing rather than experiencing those words as pinching or scratching. You know, that's kind of what we're trying to do there. So um, what we're trying, you know, we, we're recognizing that our postures affect the quality of the conversation that we have with each other and we're trying to invite postures that invite and, 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 and um, create a context for different types of conversations and that's what we were doing then before um, the break you know with a large group with a small group you can actually kind of or with one or two people you can kind of think carefully about our postures and I'm thinking about particular practitioners when you're actually, and you can do that in language, when you've actually got a big group like that, what we were doing is doing it through body, really, through our physical positions in the room, the different positions that we could create different relationships.